Hi, it's Tom Gregory here and welcome to this video where you'll learn how to run Docker inside Docker on Windows. And why would we want to do this? Well, there's many reasons and one of them is potentially a continuous integration server like Jenkins that you might have running inside Docker. And within that server, you need to build and run Docker containers. So we need to run essentially Docker inside Docker. And in today's video, we'll be lifting the covers on Docker for Windows and understanding exactly how it works and how we can set it up to run Docker in Docker with a full working example. So let's get right into it. And first up, we need to get a better understanding of exactly how Docker works on Windows. And when you're using Docker for Windows, which is also known as Docker Desktop, a virtual machine running the Docker daemon is installed using the Windows Hyper-V virtualization framework. And then commands that are run from the Docker CLI on a Windows command prompt are passed through to the Docker daemon running in a VM. And if we run Docker version, we can clearly see the distinction here between the client and the server. And the Docker engine comprises the client and the server, where the client is the Docker CLI and the server part is the Docker daemon running in the VM. And in this output here, we can see that the Docker daemon is running in Linux. And for the most part, when running and building containers, we don't need to know about these details, unless, of course, we want to run Docker inside Docker. And in this case, we need a way to firstly install the Docker CLI in a container and secondly, get the Docker CLI to communicate with the Docker daemon running on the host. And thirdly, provide the container with the correct permissions to use that communication channel. A Unix socket is a way for processes running on the same host to communicate with each other. And it doesn't involve the network, so it's more lightweight than protocols such as TCP IP sockets, and sockets are addressed using a file name ending in a .soc extension. And the Docker daemon listens to a socket at slash var slash run slash docker dot soc, and it responds to calls to the Docker API. And if we want to be able to issue Docker commands from a container, we'll need to communicate with this socket. And thankfully, since the Docker socket is described as a file, we can expose that file to the container as a volume when we run it using the docker run command dash v option. So if we want a container to have access to var run docker dot soc, we'll pass the argument dash v and then var run docker dot soc colon var run docker dot soc to expose the socket at the same location inside the container. And as an example of exposing the var run docker dot soc file as a volume mounted inside the container, we can try this portainer, which is a management UI for Docker. If we just go to a Windows terminal here and run this command, so what we're doing is running docker run and we're exposing port 9000, which is where portainer is running. And then we've got the dash V where we've got the file on the host and then how that should be exposed inside the container. And that's our Docker socket. And then we're going to be running portainer here. And now if we go to localhost 9000 here and just put in a admin password, we've got a few options of how we want Portainer to be able to manage our Docker instance. And we want it to manage a local Docker installation. And you can see here that it says ensure you have started Portainer with the dash v var run docker dot soc option that we've added. And now we can just say connect. And then if we click on local, and we can go to containers and here we essentially are getting the same output as we'd get if we did a docker ps and we're seeing what containers we've got running so this is a way of illustrating that yes you can access docker from within docker by using var run docker dot soc as the communication channel <laughs> And if you are using a Docker image that runs as the root user, then all that you need to do is to expose var on docker.soc as well as installing the Docker CLI inside a container. And to illustrate this a bit more concisely, let's create our own Docker file here. And we're going to extend from the Alpine base image. And then all we're going to do is run apk add docker. So we're going to install the Docker CLI within this image. And then on a command prompt here, we're just going to do docker build dash dash tag. 
and let's say docker in docker and the docker file is in the current directory. And now we're going to run this command here which is going to run the docker in docker image and we're also mounting the docker socket inside the container and this time we're going to run a specific command and that's going to be bin sh-c which allows us to run a command in quotes and that is going to be a docker ps just to prove that we can run docker inside docker and if we run this we can see here that we've got the output which proves that we can run docker inside docker as the root user which is the default user for Alpine Linux. But what happens when we want to run as a non-root user? And this is quite common because it's a good security practice and there's lots of containers such as Jenkins that follows this practice. It's got its own Jenkins user. To illustrate this point we're going to extend our example here and we're going to add a, a user so I'm going to add an additional run instruction and that's going to be add user dash d and dash d means there's no password and I'm going to add a user called Tom and then I'm going to add the user instruction which means that any commands that are run will be run as the Tom user and back in the command prompt here I'm just going to build an image called docker in docker and non-root from that docker file and now I'm going to run the same command that we ran before mounting the docker socket and running a docker ps command and you can see here that we've got a big fat error and it says permission denied while trying to connect to the docker daemon socket at var run docker dot so we obviously don't have permissions as the non-root user tom and we can check who does own that file by doing the same command but this time with a ls-l on var run docker.soc and sorry that has gone off the end of the screen but it does definitely say var run docker.soc trust me trust in me And right here we can see that the, the user that owns this file is root and the group is root as well. So one way we can get around this problem is to use the group add argument to the docker run command and this allows us to add additional groups to run as. So because the var run docker.soc is owned by the root group we could potentially add the root group to our tom user. And we can see how this works by running this command here, which is the same again, but this time running the groups command. And this shows us that the Tom user belongs to the Tom group. And then we can try adding in the dash dash group add. And we're going to add group zero, which is the root group. And now we can see that the Tom user also belongs to the root group, which means that we can go ahead and with our non-root docker image we can run docker ps and see what happens this time and now that's worked we're running docker inside docker as a non-root user by adding a, an additional group and if you're wanting to build docker containers inside continuous integration servers such as Jenkins and your CI server is also running as a docker container you're going to need to set up docker in docker obviously and the way we can do this in Jenkins is the same approach so we're going to install the docker CLI in Jenkins we're going to mount the docker socket inside the container when we run it and we're going to add the root group to the Jenkins user so let's create a docker file for this and we're going to extend from the latest Jenkins image we're going to switch the root user and the reason we do that is because next we're going to run a script that requires root access and that script comes from get.docker.com and that will install the docker CLI and then we're going to switch the user back to Jenkins here so in a command prompt let's build that image and let's call it something like docker in docker dash Jenkins and now that that's built let's run Jenkins like you would normally except this time we're adding the group 0 here we're using the group add and we're also mounting the docker socket inside the container and we're going to expose it on port 8080 which is Jenkins default port 
and you can see here that now we've got an instance of Jenkins running on localhost 8080. And what we want to do now is just check that we can run Docker inside this Jenkins instance. And to do that, we can use the docker exec command, docker exec, which is going to allow us to run a command inside an existing container. So we want to do that inside Jenkins, and we want to just run docker ps. And now we can see that inside our Jenkins container, we can run the docker ps command. So we're running docker in docker in Jenkins. <laughs> And you may be wondering at this point, how secure is it to be using the dash dash group add zero? And the short answer is, well, not very secure really, because essentially we're adding the user to the root group, which means that any files that are owned by the root group may be read, write or executable by that user. And it's not as bad as running the container as the root user but it's probably not far off to be honest. But unfortunately, when running containers such as Jenkins, there's no better alternative that I've found so far in Docker for Windows. But fortunately, most people running Docker containers in Windows are doing so for development purposes rather than for production. And also bear in mind that any risk of container breakout which is where the container gets full access to the host machine, is kind of mitigated by the fact that the Docker daemon in Docker for Windows is running inside a virtual machine. And it's worth pointing out that at the time of recording, WSL2, Windows Subsystem for Linux 2, is soon to be released. And this is going to provide a way to run Linux containers natively without any emulation. And it probably means that the way of running Docker inside Docker in Windows is going to change shortly. But for now, this is a good approach and hopefully it can get you running containers that you need to run. So thanks a lot for watching. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please hit that like button and do subscribe to hear about other interesting topics in the future. Thanks a lot and I'll see you next time on Tom Gregory Tech.